Okay, I am here in Reykjavik. Over there. here is that church I'm going to see today. But yeah, it's uh, gray skies and rainy. Uh, but at least it's not that cold. Uh, I think it's 49 degrees. So um, yeah, looking forward to my day in Reykjavik. I am in Reykjavik, Iceland. This has been on my list of places to come see for quite a while. And this is Harpa, which is, I guess, like their opera house. Uh, not as cool as the uh, Sydney Opera House, but nonetheless, this is a pretty interesting building to see here. Uh, I'm going to show the surroundings. So even though there's a, uh, the capital of Iceland is right behind me, it's a lot of nature out that way. There's, uh, you know, the, the, the water. And they got these little bit of lighthouses all along the coast, uh, which I've noticed. But uh, going to be heading to see some sights around the downtown area of Reykjavik. Uh, they have a rainbow street, a really, really long rainbow street. So looking forward to seeing that. They have one of the most uh, iconic churches in the world. Uh, so definitely looking forward to seeing that. And just see what else I can see. There's a few little odd museums. There's a punk museum. I'm see if I can uh, go check that out. Uh, and yeah, just walk around, see what else I can see. And uh, perhaps catch some very long street names. One of the more odd, eccentric, and unusual museums is this one right here. This is a museum of animal penises. So, yeah, let's go check it out. If you're going to be known for something, be known for the largest exposition of phalluses. Don't read Icelandic. Interesting pieces. Little Joe, the artist has. All right. Okay, after that initial little entrance, I'm about to head into the museum. Here at the uh, bar, all their tap IPAs are got handles. A lot of different. Uh, Deers. <laughs> Very interesting. Zebra. I wonder one, how does one go about starting a museum like this? Do they call up a bunch of zoos or private owners and say, hey, when your camel dies, please let me have its um, uh, 
private parts. A giraffe. Elephant, giraffe, bull, horse, pig, porpoise, ram, goat, hyena, dog, and then man. Just to put, I'm six four. So, just put it in perspective and scale. So yeah, I think right here, well. So, Cynthia so Plaster Caster, she basically plastered different rock stars. <laughs> the most famous one she's got is uh, Jimi Hendrix. And there's a certificate of authenticity. <laughs> So they have a penis probe in front of the 13 Vengeance 2 blood lines. This was. Uh, Cindy Plastercaster was one of the most flamboyant figures in the late 1960s. I was trying to figure out a way to make a penis, so I thought maybe. We got some different seals. Some Greenland seals. This is an Atlantic walrus. No, well, the law. The porpoise. Dolphins. Again, I guess once you start, you gotta go all in on doing a museum like this. Polar bear. It's cold up north. I mean, they got rabbits, they got possums, they got crab, they cover. Just about every species. Elephant next to a duck. I do like to do got a lot of 
history about circumcisions in Egypt. Um, the devil. Historic pieces as well. Oh. So again, they cover. I can't. I imagine the shorter list is what they don't have in this museum. Skin condoms, male skin. That's a penis film. See how no? Now we're just getting into weird things. Which Iceland does believe in hills and trolls. Okay, let's get a little bit of info on the founder. The founder, Sigurd Hartarsson. I, I can't pronounce that, but uh, who's the Yeah, he was writing really 20 books. And that's all in Icelandic. Oh, these are carved by the founder. All right. Well, man that dedicated his life to getting every penis imaginable in the animal kingdom. So, I have to say, this has been one of the most odd, uh, but yet unique and actually informative museums. You know, when you hear about, you know, uh, whales and, you know, like this different size spectrums, but you actually stand next to it or to see it in person, it's it's interesting, right? It uh, gives you a new perspective, I guess, in that arena. But at the end of the museum, I love how they did like a little history. Uh, that was nice and informative. And they also had the folklore section at the end, which was kind of, you know, unique to see. Odd and unique. I like these things. So if you're in Iceland and Reykjavik, come check out this museum. It's well worth your time. Okay, here on this little walking street, you'll find the Punk Rock Museum, which is, uh, of course, it's underground because the punk rock scene is so underground. But you get a little history. So, supposedly, it's in like an old uh, bathroom uh, rest station. So, let's go check this out. It's a museum, no It's a, it's a bathroom stall. A lot of punk information. It's literally bathroom stalls, but it's still a different experience. My big self is having a little bit of a time get there. Here, oh. yeah. Yeah. And we have some stalls here. <laughs> As I said, this is a old bathroom stall. <laughs> Leather jackets.
flags, no borders, no masters. Say what you want about the punk rock music scene, but uh, it was all about uh, raging against the machine. Uh, it was all about uh, fighting the powers that be, the establishment, etc. It was uh, counterculture. Everything was rolled up into the enigma of punk. And it was all about that, just that, you know, going against the norm, being eccentric, embracing uniqueness. And so kudos to all the rebels that are into punk music and keep punk alive. Okay, here's the Rainbow Street that goes all the way down to their church, which is one of their iconic landmarks here. So yeah, here's the beginning of the Rainbow Street that goes all the way down to the church. Here's a bunch of downtown luxurious penthouse apartments, and supposedly Kevin Bacon, Kevin Bacon was here. Who knows if he really was or not, but let's believe. Okay, on the, basically the street that goes up to the church over there, I saw this place right here. I Maisie, I Maisie, like amazing. It's uh, Irish, Irish oh, photography. Uh, starts from about 4,990 krona, but they do a uh, picture of your Iris. That's pretty cool. It's a uniquely you piece of art, if you will. Pretty neat. So what's kind of cool, there are 8 billion people on Earth and every single one has a unique pair of eyes. So that's what makes it a very unique piece of art. They do it in different, they can do a photo box, glass, photo wood art box. But it's so unique, it's almost like looking into a different universe. Mm -hmm. like, that's kind of like Doom. Okay, I'm here at it's I how do I pronounce it? Amazing? Like amazing. I'm amazing. So I was walking down the street towards the church, saw this place. I thought it was super unique as as art. Yep. Taking the retina, the iris of the eye, which is unique because of all the little vessels yep. in the eye. So how long have you guys been in business? Uh, in Iceland, uh, almost two years. Two years, okay. but the whole business is like almost ten years old. Ten years old for for a decade plus. And so, uh, who is the original founder? Do you know the name of the original uh, founder? I remember one name, but it's Murray. Murray. Um, I don't remember. No worries. Yeah. And then, uh, what are some facts about the iris that you know, or some details that you could share? Like, uh, we have one right here. Like there's a billion people on Earth, and like no iris is the same. No, no iris. Like, yeah. like your left and right are different. So even both eyes are different from each other. So yeah. okay. Then my next question is: is that um, uh, what are? Um, is there some like when people have like the the two colors in the one eye? I think it's called heterochromia. Heterochromia. Yeah. Oh, okay. How common is that? Do you see a lot of folks with that come in? I think it's also because they know of it and uh -huh. have like a special eye, so they tend to come here. Uh -huh. But like we see it almost every week. Every week. Wonderful. Uh, how fast can you put put the prints to the glass? There's so many different ways you can get your eyes uh, printed. And, and... So there are two sizes for the print in the store, okay. on like a photo paper, okay. and it takes around five to ten minutes per eye. Okay. And then to find you guys on social, just look up Amazing. Um, yeah, right oh, it's Amazing. right there. So, but well, thank you so much. Thank you. Pretty cool photo gallery right here. I love that sign right there. Oh yeah. Okay, walk in front of the guy filming. All right. But yeah, pretty cool. Almost there. See some street art. But yeah, this is a. Uh... All right. Oh, almost missed that. All right, this is for your PC gaming guys out there. Baldur's Gata, to me, must translate to Baldur's Gate. Oh yeah, Baldur's Gate. <laughs> All right, I made it here. And let's get a real good close look at that. Yeah, it's very, uh, 
I think there is some uh, landscape here that kind of looks like that with the rocks. Uh, I think I've seen it on some video shorts on the internet, but uh, yeah, it's very striking, uh, very iconic landmark. I don't think you really see anything else in the world that looks quite like that, but I believe it's an homage to those areas of Iceland that have those uh, rocks that look just like that. The little rigid pillars of rocks. So I think that's what that's uh, representing. I could be wrong. But anyhow, I've reached there. Another thing I'll say is that even though uh, it says that this tree is supposed to be rainbow, there's no rainbow coming all the way to the church. So unlike the early town where there was a rainbow leading all the way up to the church, this one, it stops way, way down the street. So it does not continue up to here. It would have been a nice touch if they would have had the Rainbow Street come all the way to the church, but they did not. So your expectations are, uh, lower your expectations. Here at this, uh, I guess it's a lake, pond? I don't know what to call it. Some houses there. Uh, there's a lot of different birds here. I like that they put these little signs up to let you know what kind of geese or swan or ducks you're looking at. Little touches like this that a little city can do, kind of be informative. Because a lot of times people don't know what kind of birds they're looking at. And I just found out the other day there's various species of seagulls, but uh, get on them. All sorts of birds, ducks, seagulls. Yeah, very picturesque out here. All right, the reason why I came out to this lake is for this particular sculpture right here, which is called the uh, Bureaucrat, right? Um, you can see it's got just a big rock for, I guess, a head. Um, but all, all business on the bottom and nothing up top, just rock. But, uh, yeah. The black cone, monument to civil disobedience. And you see the black cone here and how it causes a crack. Walking along, here's this little square. But check out, we got a puffin' polar bear match. <laughs> All right, walking to the longest street in Reykjavik's uh, area and uh, saw this thing, and saw that it's a UNESCO City of Literature landmark. So it's called Gridal. He must have been an author, I'm assuming. So Gridal's house. And he was a writer, illustrator, and natural scientist. Okay. And there's his house. Cool. All right, Iceland Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, straight from the sewer. Another giant troll. Sense of scale. Huge. That's a pretty cool mosaic. This is on the outside of one of their art museums here. Best burgers. Somehow this came in the list, but it's supposedly the best hot dog in all of Iceland. It's made out of lamb. And so lamb is uh, extensively eaten in the Middle East. But you tell a place is good because of the long, long line. It kind of goes back a ways. It's about 20 people. Looking forward to checking out this hot dog and seeing how good it is. They got the uh, owl to keep the birds away. Pretty smart. That's our website. Check that out. Okay, I'm here in the rain, but I got a hot dog. So this is supposed to be Iceland's best hot dog. Pretty good. Actually, it's the meat. I must say, that's definitely good. I love the crunch of the onions. If you're in Rage of it, you gotta come check them out. This is really good. And that is Elephant Rock. Looks like a little elephant. Okay, so today was supposed to be the Westman Islands, Jaime Island which has the world's, uh, I think Iceland's largest population of puffins. But due to the rough seas, actually they were a lot rougher this morning, but uh, they're selling, been selling away for a few hours now. 
it sucks because I really was looking forward to seeing the puffins. Um, now I'll just have to wait till my next trip to Iceland because this was our last stop in Iceland. So I really had put all my eggs into the Jaime Island <laughs> uh, basket, if you will, proverbial basket, to go see puffins. And the other stops on the trip, except for the one stop, was mostly rainy and windy. Uh, but today was supposed to have been the, the day where you, you can't help but see a puffin because I think there's over a million puffins on that island. Um, and now we've been selling away for a few hours now going on to uh, Northern Ireland. Um, but yeah, it kind of sucks, but it's just, you can't control the weather, can't control the sea conditions. Um, but it just makes, makes something for me to look forward to on the next visit to Iceland. But that's how life goes and travels go sometimes. Sometimes you don't get to do the thing you really wanted to do. Uh, I feel really bad for a lot of the folks on this this, this boat because you know you, a lot of these folks came from the states. So imagine spending a lot of money uh, and flying over to Iceland, coming over over to this boat, and to you know want to see puffins. And for the ones that didn't see it on a previous uh, day, uh, to not see it today, I know a lot of people were, were expecting to see puffins today. So uh, it's really upsetting, especially when they flew you know 15 plus hours. To get over here for me i only had to fly five six hours i'm already on this side of the world so i know i'll be back so it's not that big of a downer it is a downer nonetheless because you you have expectations and sometimes they fall short but i know i'll be back and um, at least the captain makes a decision that's based on the safety of his own crew and his passengers and so you got to respect those decisions and keep it moving so hitting up belfast next and then dublin and uh yeah so no puffins this trip.